Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be doing uh, the topic of network software architecture or basically the software that governs the network and communications in a network. Okay, so we will be studying and understanding different important points, rather different important terms that you will often see throughout this course and the terminology that is actually used to describe a network. Okay, so the first important point is layers. What are layers and what is the role of layers in computer network? So as you can see the diagram here, in any network, the hosts that are connected to that network or the machines that are connected to that network make use of multiple layers so as to communicate with any other host present in a network. So we can say that each host that is connected to a network consists of multiple layers that help that host in communication in the network. Now what are these layers? These layers basically define certain kinds of functionality and they break down the entire task of communication into sub functions such that each layer has a very clearly defined functionality for itself. Okay, so the number of layers that are present in any uh, that are used by a network can vary depending upon the model or uh, the reference model or the network model that the network is following. But and we will study about these models in the next few classes also what are the types of models and the layers that are present in them. But irrespective of that fact, uh, all the models or in any case, the network hosts will make use of multiple layers and each layer has a specific functionality defined for it. Now, why are there multiple layers? The multiple layer concept comes into picture so as to divide the entire work the entire task of communication and every layer that is present below its higher layer provides some functionality to the higher layer and it also hides the unnecessary details which are not uh, required to be known by the higher layer so basically each layer performs some task and it provides some services to the layer above it. Layer 1 will provide some services to layer 2. Layer 2 will provide some services to layer 3. Layer 3 will provide some service to layer 4 and 4 will provide some service to layer 5. But at the same time, layer 4 will never tell all those details which are not necessary about its functioning to layer 5 and so on. Now you must notice that between these layers I have drawn double ended arrows. Double ended arrow means that the communication happens in both the directions. That means layer 3 can interact with layer 4 and layer 4 can also interact with layer 3. Now this direction will depend upon the uh, how communication will is happening. So for example, if host 1 has to uh, communicate with host 2, say host 1 is a client, it has to request a web page from host 2 which is the server, then host 1 will uh, send a message or will initiate the communication at layer 5. Then at host 1, layer 5 will send this information to layer 4. Layer 4 will perform its functionality and make that communication possible from its end. Then layer 4 will interact with layer 3, layer 3 with layer 2 and then with layer 1. So at host 1, the communication direction is from top to bottom, from layer 5 to layer 1. Now when uh, the information or the communication that has to take place reaches layer 1 it will then interact with the physical medium the actual cable wires the links the waves that have to carry this information and this in a uh, uh, physical medium at host 2 will then interact in a bottom-up manner that means here the direction was from top to down and in this host, which is the receiver, the layers will interact from bottom to up. 
layer 1 will communicate a message to layer 2 layer 2 will perform some functionality make the communication possible and better and provided services to layer 3 then layer 3 will communicate with layer 4 and so on layer 4 will communicate with layer 5 to deliver the message or to complete the communication that host 1 had initiated okay then host 2 when it replies to host 1 it will again do the same process but in the opposite direction the uh, when host 2 has to send the reply back to host 1 the uh, direction would be from layer 5 to layer 1 and then here at host 1 from layer 1 to layer 5 okay now to interact or to communicate all these layers in fact all the hosts must follow some kinds of rules and those set of rules are known as a protocol so every layer at two corresponding machines interacts with the layer at the other machine following some rules and those rules are known as protocols okay so uh, if a network is following some kind of network model which consists of n layers then a protocol or a set of rules will be followed at each layer such that the corresponding layers of the two machines will follow that protocol so that they can make the communication possible the simplest example of protocol that i always give is that if you know english and your french and your friend knows spanish then you need a set of rules to tell and uh, to communicate with each other so that you uh, you are communicating also the other person is understanding also so you need to uh, you know set a rule that you will be interacting in a common language or you will be sending data at this speed so that i can receive and understand it as well okay so this is what a protocol is now let's understand what a peer is so peer means the processes the softwares the hardwares that are uh, working at corresponding layers are referred to as peers so basically if layer 2 at host 1 is making use of certain hardware and software processes as well as layer 2 at host 2 is making uh, use of some software and hardware resources then these uh, entities will be referred to as peers okay so peers are basically entities that are present on the same layer or the corresponding layer of the communicating devices okay now let's come to interface so interface is nothing but the functionality that is provided by a lower layer to the higher layer and interface basically allows uh, different layers to communicate without worrying about all the functions that have been taken care by the layers below it okay so if we have a clean good interface written between the layers then any changes that need to be made at a lower layer can be made without affecting the higher layers that is why it is very important to write different layers to develop to create different layers such in such a way that their interface is independent of the change that happens at either end okay so we will never want that if any changes are being made at layer 3 we are including or excluding some functionality from layer 3 then that changes should affect the upper or the lower layers okay so that is an uh, a, that is a property of a clean interface now coming to the fifth point or the fifth term which is the protocol stack so protocol stack is nothing but the set of protocols that are followed by all the layers in that network so if uh, you are present in a particular network and you are interacting with all other devices then at each layer some protocol will be followed layer 5 of each of the machine would follow a common protocol say layer 5 protocol 
layer 4 will follow some other protocol because their functionality is different the rules of communication will be different that means the layer 4 protocol will be different from all other protocols so the set of all these protocols present at each of the layers make up the protocol stack okay and the network architecture is the collection of layers and the protocols. So when we say what is the architecture of this network, you need to define what are the layers that are uh, helping in the communication and at each layer what are the protocols. So network architecture consists of two components, the layer and the protocols. Next come headers. Now, uh, whenever a layer uh, interacts with the layer above and below it, it adds some information that helps in the communication. So, say host 1 has to uh, interact with host 2, then what will happen is, uh, the, this message will be a message, say M, will be generated by host 1. Okay, now this message will be generated at layer 5 okay now this uh, message when it goes to layer 4 that means layer 5 sends this message to layer 4 layer 4 will add some kind of header that is a control information that helps in the communication uh, process now this extra information this control information is known as header which is added by almost all the layers that are present in the communication that are present at the host so host one uh, created a message at layer five then when this message was sent to layer four layer four added some information in the form of header at along with the message now when this uh, message is sent to layer 3 then along with the message and the header 4 attached by the previous layer another header say header 3 will be attached. Now the entire message that has been formed along with header 4 and header 3 will be sent to layer 2. Now layer 2 might also attach some control information, some extra information from its own end. Now what are these information, how these are different from uh, each other, we will be seeing in separate chapters. But for now you must understand that every layer attaches some header, uh, some extra information as the original message, original data travels from the top to the bottom. Now when this uh, message along with all its headers will go through layer 1 and the physical medium. This is the physical medium. It can be a wired medium, a cable wire or a wireless medium. Now when this reaches the other side here at the lowest layer all the headers would be present. But as soon as this message starts going up each layer will remove the information which is of its own use. So layer 2 attached some information for layer 2 of host 2. This is host 2 which is the destination or the receiver. So layer 2 at host 2 will remove the information that was attached by layer 2 of host 1. So H2 the header 2 will be removed because this information is not required by layer 3 of host 2. So the, uh, the content, the information that will be transmitted upwards will only consist of the original message, header 4 and header 3. Layer 2 will not touch any headers that are attached by the other layers. Now layer 3 will read the header information that was present as h3 it will remove this because it has uh, taken care it has uh, now got this information which layer 3 from host 1 wanted it to know okay so now h3 will be removed and the remaining message that means h4 along with m will be communicated to layer 2 okay so here i am uh, sorry it will be communicated to layer 4 now layer 4 will also remove its own header and finally at layer 5 of host 2 the original message will be received. Okay, So these were the 
key terms or the important terms that are required to know the network architecture now let us see the definitions of each of these so starting with what are layers layer is basically uh, the the part or the levels that form a network each host that is connected to a network is organized in the form of layers and each layer will provide some services to its higher layers okay it will also interact with the lower layers but we generally say that each layer is providing services to its higher layers and it will hide unimportant details as well it will provide abstraction as you know in terms of uh, oops or op object oriented programming so it was it will hide unimportant details which are not required by higher layers and it will provide some services now what is a protocol protocol is the set of rules that are agreed by the communicating parties for performing the communication and generally when we say layer n protocol we mean the set of rules that are followed by layer n of both sender and receiver so at each layer the corresponding layers at each communicating end will follow the same protocol obviously you need to follow the same set of rules so as to perform a communication right so layer n protocol means the protocol that is followed by layer n of the sender as well as layer n of the receiver end okay now coming to peers as i told peer are the entities that are running on the corresponding layer of each machine that is communicating so peers can be software processes or they can be hardware components that enable the communication so every time we are talking whether we are talking of a protocol or peer we are talking of corresponding layers okay corresponding means at the same level level uh, layer 5 will be corresponding to layer 5 of the other end okay and so on now interface defines the functionality that is provided by the lower layer to the higher layer okay so whenever we talk about functionality we'll always follow this convention that the lower layer is providing functionality to the higher layer and clean interfaces allow a layer to change without affecting other layers right so this is an important property that must be taken care of now what is a protocol stack protocol stack is the set of all the protocols that are followed by a network at all the layers so each layer will have one protocol and when you combine all the protocols that are followed at all the layers you get the protocol stack network architecture is again the layers along with the protocols that are being followed and at last the header is any kind of control information now this control information can be as basic as the address the source and the destination addresses or it can be information that helps to prevent errors to prevent loss of information loss of packets in uh, communication right so a large number of uh, control uh, data a large amount of control information and data is appended at each layer which we will study in detail further but as of now a header is uh, the um, the information that is added at each different layer which is required for correct communication okay so this was all for today's video i hope you have understood these key terms in the next video we will be starting with the reference models the osi and the tcp models tcp ip models that are actually followed for developing and commute uh, for communication in computer networks so that was all for today's video thank you for watching till we meet in the next video mind your exam